So here they're looking for the ratio of daisies to roses in three different ways. So we have to give them what they're looking for. They're asking for daisies to roses, right? So we have eight daisies and 19 roses. And it has to come in that order. So that's, that's eight to 19. And it needs to come in that order. And we're looking for the best answer. So that's eight to 19, but that's 19 to eight. So that's the trick answer. They're trying to trick us there. But if we look at the third answer, 8 to 19, 8 to 19, and 8 to 19, that's the best answer there. Question two, they're looking for a ratio equivalent to 6 sixteenths with greater terms, numbers that look larger but are still equivalent. So honestly, the easiest way to do this is just to take your fraction and figure out what that is in decimal form. And if you do 6 divided by 16 in your calculator, you'll get 0.375, all right? And then you need to figure out which of these other fractions or other ratios is also equivalent to 0.375. And if you do that, you'll find that 9 over 24, when you divide that in your calculator, <clears throat> 9 divided by 24 ends up giving you the same exact decimal. And 9 over 24 has greater terms, right? So that's our best answer. Question 3. 10 feet to 3 yards, in simplest form, these terms are both measuring length. And when that's the case, we can attempt to put the units, um, we, we can attempt to make both units exactly the same as well. All right, so here we need to make our units the same in order to put it in simplest form. And it's much easier to put yards into feet here. So we're going to have feet over feet. Nothing changes in the numerator, but in the denominator, we need to change three yards into a certain number of feet. And as you recall, not one yard is equal to three feet. Two yards would therefore be six feet, and we're looking for three yards, which would be nine feet, right? And then we have 10 over 9. We ask ourselves, can we reduce this? Can we simplify that any further? And if you know about the factors of 10 and 9, you really realize that no, you cannot. So 10 to 9 is our best answer here. Question 4, 55 to 30 is equal to some other ratio. Again, you can put this in fraction form, as you know that you can do with ratios. And you could simply divide this to figure out what decimal that is. 55 divided by 30 is 1.83 repeating, 1.83 repeating, meaning the threes go on forever. So we need to figure out which of these other ratios, other fractions, would give us the same exact decimal. Uh, 6 divided by 11, that wouldn't really make sense. I'm going to try uh, 11 over 6 here, and we'll see if that works. 11 divided by 6, 11 divided by 6 actually gives us that exact answer, 1.83 repeating. All right, so 11 out of 6 is, or 11 over 6, 11 to 6 is our best answer there. And you can just you can just try the other ones as well and see if they work, but that's probably the easiest way to do this. Another way to do it, because there's multiple ways to do math quite often, is you can set each fraction equivalent to one another and see if they actually are equivalent by finding a scale factor. Like how do we get from 55 to 11? Well, we divide by 5, right? And do we do the same exact thing on the bottom? Do we divide by 5 down here and still get 6? Yes, we do, and therefore those are equivalent, right? Question 5. This ratio as a fraction in simplest form. They're asking for 3 fourths to 8, or 8 over 1. This is the same thing as 3 fourths divided by 8 over 1. And when you have this division problem of 3 fourths divided by 8 over 1, as you know, we can keep the first one, change this to a multiplication sign, and then simply flip or find the reciprocal of 8 over 1. And from here, we can ask ourselves, can we do any cross simplifying at all? And the answer is no. So you simply multiply fractions straight across. three over 32 and as we see that is our that is our final best answer here sorry my phone's going crazy sorry about the buzzing i'm just super popular all right three over 32 that's our best answer stop calling me okay bye question six 
Uh, 12 cans of soup costs $7.80. How much is it going to cost to purchase 6 cans of soup? There's lots of different ways to do this. Uh, it's going to cost $7.80 for 12, for 12 cans. So you can figure out how much, essentially, how much is it going to cost for one can, right? You can figure that out. And you ask yourself, well, how do I get from 12 cans to one can? I divide by 12. So I must do the same thing on the top. Essentially 780 divided by 12 to get the cost of one can, right? $7.80 divided by 12 would give you the cost of one can. And that looks like 65 cents, right? So this is really 0.65 for one can, right? But we don't know, we don't want to know one can. We want to know how much is it going to cost for six cans. So as you probably know, we need to go ahead and multiply by 6 on the bottom and the top to find our final answer here. So 0.65 times 6, the cost of 6 cans is going to be 3.9. 3.9, since we're talking about money, is 3.90, which is $3.90. That's your final answer. Don't get tricked by the 0.65, right? That's the trick answer. Question 7, this fraction as uh, in simplest form, 2 thirds to 5, 5 over 1, in simplest form, we need to keep, we need to change, and we need to flip. But I like to write it out correctly first so I don't make any mistakes. This is 2 thirds to 5 over 1. So keep the first one, fraction, change, and then flip. We cannot do any cross simplifying or any simplifying at all right now. 2 times 1 is 2. 3 times 5 is 15. Can't simplify. That is our final answer, 2 over 15. Don't get tricked by the last answer. Ratio in simplest form. Hey, very similar to the last one, right? We're dividing. 2 thirds divided by 1 fifth. Keep. Change. Flip. Can we do any simplifying? No, we can Multiplying fractions, that's no problem. Top times the top, bottom times the bottom. 10 over 3. 10 over 3. There's your answer. Question 9. A bicyclist rides 1 fifth mile in 1 65th of an hour. Oh my. What, write this rate as a unit rate. We need to eventually get a 1 in the denominator. Anytime you're talking about unit rate, you're going to be dividing. All right. So it's essentially 1 fifth divided by 1 65th. Same thing we've been doing. 1 5th. Keep it, change, and then flip. All right. Here we can simplify now. We can divide both of these by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 65 divided by 5 is 13. Right? And then we have 1 times 13, which is 13, over 1 times 1, which is 1. And this would be, one-fifth was regarding the miles, and this is miles per hour, essentially. So we have 13 divided by 1, which is 13, and that's 13 miles per hour, which is, which is right here, this third answer here.